Hello. Good good afternoon or good morning uh, to all of you uh, from wherever you are from. Um, and, and a warm welcome for this session. And uh, my name is uh, Dr. Sandeep Mavanal. Actually, I am the founder of Flow Thermal Lab. And uh, some of you know me, some of you are new to uh, Flow Thermal Lab. So how we will go ahead about this, uh, you know, this session is, I'll give a brief introduction about Flow Thermal Lab and what we are doing and what are all, uh, you know, the, the background about Flow Thermal Lab for first five minutes. And then uh, I will hand over uh, to, you know, to the expert on FSI, uh, Dr. Kadapa. And uh, yeah, th this is how we will uh, go about, about with this uh, session. So to start with, uh, let me introduce about Flow Thermal Lab. Uh, I'll share my screen. Um, can you can you see my screen? Is it visible? Yes. Yes. Yes, yes sir. Yeah. Hi. So today, anyway, we you all know that you're all here for this FSI workshop. So it is basically an introduction to fluid structure interaction, and I hope you know you will all get a lot of idea, uh, you know, about at least an introduction about this topic, and uh, you can class you know clarify all your questions um, and you can ask so several of you have already sent many questions to us uh, you know when when you registered so some of these questions we will try to address in the beginning itself and uh, some other questions you know if you have some live questions you can try to put in chat and then i can moderate it and then uh, you know dr karapa can answer all of your queries okay so to start with what is um, flow thermal lab like you know some of you are aware uh, basically, we are an online platform. You you see that you know we, we are having online education and you have we have courses, and at the same time we are also doing consultancy services, which you don't see it right now on the platform, but you will see like in a couple of weeks. Uh, this is this is going to be there on the on our website. So we are already working with companies from Europe and you know other parts of the world, uh, especially from the automotive company uh, automotive industry, and uh, we are doing a lot of. Um, consultancy services in CFP coding, etc. Okay, so uh, how does it work? So from online education, you know, whoever uh, were, you know, whoever did really good, you know, some of our students, they later on became our, our engineers, you know, so they are working uh, in the consultancy along with some of the senior guys. And then uh, they're also supporting our online system now. Like they're also working for consultancy services and they're also helping for, uh, you know, bringing some of you, like, you know, helping some of people who are really new to uh, computational engineering and there we are helping them. So uh, we are trying to bridge the gap between the university education and, you know, what actually industry needs. So this is what we are doing. And uh, the consultancy services, as you know, like, you know, it's, it's all about quality uh, consultancy projects and are doing delivering uh, results on time delivery and with very high quality. This is our motto in the consultancy side. Okay, so where we are located, we are basically from uh, UK. So the main uh, office or the main incubation center is at uh, UK. So we are part of the business park. We are incubated at the um, business park at the University of Nottingham. Uh, so this is, uh, you know, we are located in the second floor here, along with many other startups uh, in the university. And uh, we also have office in India, and uh, we also have people working from India. Uh, so and this is our registered address and you know, registered uh, company details. And I just want to, you know, in, in the beginning itself, uh, show you some of the, uh, if you are not aware, we, we also give courses like very fundamental courses like CFD foundation course, uh, you know, ANSYS uh, for fluent uh, from beginners to high and advanced level, open form course for really, and, and all of these courses are done or developed by experts in the field, like and, and, and having PhD and, and quite a lot of experience in the industry. And we have introduction to finite element method course, like I mean, from Dr. Karapa, we have scientific computing course on C++, essential maths, introduction to FSI, and many more courses are coming on, you know, on, in the preparation. 
And similarly, we also conduct quite a lot of workshops uh, like multi-phase flow workshops, very specific to a certain domain and going deep into that uh, for several days, live workshops, talking to people, you know, uh, when you're, you're working along with us using software. So design and CFD of turbo machines, you know, these are all done by industrial experts and professors from institutes like IITs and, you know, other, other, uh, other foreign universities. And uh, like uh, Python, for MATLAB, and recently we had the machine learning workshop for mechanical engineers. So these are all the live sessions we do, like uh, workshops and trainings. And we also have some bundle, uh, you know, uh, courses like you can buy a bundle, and then you have several courses along with that, which is at much discounted rates. And uh, we also run a mentorship program, which is like we right right now we have two batches, which are like you know fifty students each which is from a very systematic, it's a nine months program. So we, we start from a very beginning of the basics to very, you know, to, to make them experts in certain field, in certain domains. So it's a, it's a very dedicated, uh, you know, our flagship program. So this is our mentorship program, which is, uh, which is going on right now, there are two batches. And uh, so this is what we are from the education side and from the consultancy side, as I told, we, we work on several projects. Uh, especially, you know, from industries from Europe. Okay, and uh, from today's session, you will you will learn many things about FSI, and you can also see that you know there are all these courses. We are going to give you a special discount at the end of this session. We we'll give you a coupon code for those who all participated in this workshop, so that you can maybe use for learning uh, the courses. All right, so that's all from my side. I I just stopped sharing about this, and then we will now move to our main topic topic today that is about FSI. So before that, let me introduce about uh, Dr. Kadapa. So his name is Dr. Chanakesha Kadapa and uh, you know he's my friend and also uh, welcome Kadapa. So uh, and uh, he's a lecturer at the uh, University of Edinburgh, Edinburgh Napier University from UK and uh, he's a lecturer in the mechanical engineering department uh, and about his educational background uh, he did a PhD and also postdoc from Sansuya University, UK, and uh, he did his MTech or Masters from IIT Kanpur from India, and he also have a lot of industrial experience. He was working in GE for quite a long time. So that's all about uh, you know a, sh a short introduction about Karapa. But uh, you know what is most important is he's one of the well known figure in FSI. He's one of the well known expert in this field. And uh, which is not so easy, like, you know, the FSI, as you know, uh, it, it involves uh, finite element method, it is involving structures, it involves fluids, and you need to know both these fields and also to couple this field, which is the most interesting and more, most exciting and most challenging part. So I, um, you know, I hand over to uh, uh, Kadapa uh, and, you know, uh, over to you. Okay, thank you. Hello. Thank you very much, Sandeep. Thank you for the nice introduction. And I thank you all for taking your time out of your weekend and attending this workshop. I hope you find it useful by the end of this workshop. Okay, uh, Sandeep, uh, you need to enable me to share. You need to give me access. Yes, you can, you can share now. Okay, yeah, thank you. Okay, so, yeah. Okay. Hello again, everyone. So wherever you are, thank you for making your time. Welcome to this short workshop on fluid structure interaction. So our idea was to introduce you to the topic. We uh, are coming, coming from academic background, especially working on fluid structure interaction over the past 10 or 12 or 10 or so years on FSI. I do understand the challenges. I do know the gaps that exist between academia and, and the industrial requirement. So we thought okay, we, we can have a sh this workshop to introduce you, uh, whoever you are interested in fluid such interaction, okay, to the topic of fluid such interaction. So I prepared the slides so that I don't go into the technical details. I, I'm going to show you just an overall in the introduction to FSI, what are the applications, how do we solve these problems using computers, what are the challenges? 
what are the opportunities you have, what are the software we have available for solving FSI problems and so on. And then in the end, we will try to answer all of your questions as much as possible. So I don't want to spend one hour on these slides. I'll try to finish them in 15 to 20 minutes. So this is the outline of this talk. So just some introduction to FSI, applications of FSI in various fields to give you an idea about different applications and then computational aspects and challenges. That is how we solve FSI problems on computers. What are the software available? And then, and then we have Q and A session. Before going into the details, I'm going to show you a short, like couple of short videos. One is on air elastic flutter, that is flutter of aircraft winds. We'll share the slides and these videos with you. So after the workshop, you can go through them in detail. And the second one is, yeah, the second one is, I'm sure some of you might be familiar. So this is the flutter of a bridge deck, this bridge under underground violent oscillations because of the wind, wind forces acting on the bridge deck. As you can see, it, it, it behaved almost like a rubber, as if it was made out of rubber. After experiencing violent oscillations, the bridge eventually collapsed. This was one of the learning moments in the history of engineering, especially civil engineering. We learned a lot from this experience and this was used to, to change the standards for bridge designs by incorporating these nonlinear loads, these wave loads onto the bridge structures. So, okay. These are the two classical examples of fluid search interaction, but what is fluid search interaction? Fluid structure interaction is a multidisciplinary subject that deals with the interactions of fluid flow and moving structures. The moving structure can be a rigid structure or it can be a flexible structure. On one side, we have fluid mechanics where we study motion of fluids. The fluid can be of any type. And on the other side, we have solid mechanics or structural mechanics where we study the behavior of structures like displacement behavior, that is deformation behavior and dynamic, dynamic behavior. And fluid such interaction is the study of the combination of fluids and structures, in particular, how they interact with each other. How they interact with each other. So that is what we focus on in this field of fluid such interaction. I have shown you a couple of examples of fluid structure interaction, but fluid structure interaction is quite ubiquitous in nature as well as in the products designed by engineers. We look at some of the examples of fluid structure interaction in various fields. In mechanical engineering, the common examples are like walls, check walls, when the walls open and close, so the walls need to interact with the surrounding fluid and bearings, turbines, different types of turbines. We extract energy from the wind using wind turbines. Here we have interactions between the turbine blades and the wind. And we have hydraulic turbines where the interaction is between water and the turbine buckets. In aerospace engineering, we have the classic example of wind flutter, that is interaction of aircraft winds against the wind. And Deployment of parachutes is also another example of fluid search interaction and interaction of helicopter rotor blades with wind again is an example of fluid search interaction. In civil and ocean engineering, we have quite a few examples as we have seen already, the flutter of bridge deck and chimneys that are used in the industries, in the process industries, they do vibrate because of the wind forces. And we also have other examples like sedimentation and settling of particles. One of, uh, one of the examples that we rely on, that, that is the example of fluid structure interaction that is quite important to us for our survival is that we 
have in our own bodies that is the flow of blood through heart walls through arteries even the interaction of blood cells with each other with the surrounding fluid so our survival depends upon an accurate and perfect functioning of these heart walls and arteries in supplying or in pumping in pumping blood when it comes to nature fluid and cell interaction is even more relevant even more practical we have quite a few applications in biology and related fields so how the flagella move how the sperm move and we we have classic example of swimming or flight instead flight bird flight and how do the sea grass interact with the ocean currents how do they affect uh, the ocean atmosphere how do they affect or lack of the sea grass affect the ocean environment so these are all examples of fluid structure interaction that we do see in nature okay now what are the equations that we use when we solve fluid structure interaction problem again without going into the details just some basic equation to give you an idea in fluid structure interaction as we have seen we have a solid domain and we have a fluid domain and they interact with each other at the interface between the fluid domain and the solid domain for simplicity we can assume that the solid or the structure is a rigid structure so we can model it using that it that dynamic equations okay which are second order odes and for fluid we can take an an incompressible fluid which we model using navier-stokes equation and at the interface we have two conditions that must be satisfied one condition is the kinematic constraint that is the fluid must move at the same velocity as that of the solid at the interface so that is the first constraint this specifies the velocity at the interface and the second condition is the traction equilibrium the forces coming from the fluid side and the forces coming from the solid side should be in equilibrium so these are the two conditions that couple the fluid domain and the solid domain now as we look at these two these different equations we can see that these are nonlinear equations navier-stokes equations are nonlinear equations and because of the coupling that is set of equations 3 the all these equations make the fluid structure interaction problem a highly nonlinear problem to solve of course we can reduce the complexity of the fsi problems by making some approximation and assumptions still the fsi problem is quite challenging to solve when compared to the stand alone problems in either solid mechanics or fluid mechanics to understand the behavior of fluids and solids and to solve fsi problems we can have we can use different methods the first one is experimental method the second one is analytical methods the third one is as we are all familiar numerical methods each method has its own advantages and disadvantages when it comes to experiments for example wind tunnel experiments or water and the wave tank experiments so we do need them to establish the models to validate our numerical methods however these experimental me methods are expensive and because of their expensive nature and because of the difficulty in conducting the experiments they are limited to limited set of parameters if you want to do optimization studies we will not with these experimental methods will become quite expensive so impractical analytical methods do have some advantages in understanding the behavior at at fixed points in small deformation regime or using rigid body approximation okay we can also simplify or we can also express the forces acted by the fluid on the solid using some empirical expression for example a polynomial expansion and use these expansion polynomial expansion 
as approximation to solve reduced order models. We do have some reduced order models, for example, weight oscillator model or quasi study models. However, these methods have very limited ap applicability. We will, since we are making lots of approximations, we cannot use them for a range of or variety of problems. And the third one is numerical methods. Numerical methods are very difficult to de develop for multi-physics problems, especially for this type of multi-physics problems or multi-physics phenomena that we have in fluid structure interaction. We have different methods for different problems. There is no single method that is applicable for all kind of FSI problems because of the challenges different set of problems pose, we develop different types of numerical methods. The most important or the main challenge is in coupling the fluid solver and the solid solver to solve the coupled problems. So the challenges are when we have flexible structures, turbulent flows, or large deformations. We'll see more about this. Computational aspects of the FSI problems. What do we need or what type of methods we have to model FSI problems using computers? Before we go into the details, first, what is the difference between a typical CFD problem and an FSI problem? In a typical CFD problem, we have a solid and we want, let's say we have a circular cylinder and we want to study the flow past a circular cylinder. So this is a typical CFD problem. We use some software to generate the mesh and we simulate and if the Reynolds number is sufficiently large enough, then we do see this vertex shading. This is flow past fixed object, fixed cylinder. In the case of FSI problem, the solid is allowed to move. Even if we, if we place the solid on a spring and damper system so that it doesn't move beyond a certain point because the spring constrains the motion of the solid. So let us say the displacement is moderate, maybe of, of the order of the diameter of the solid. For this problem, if you simulate it, for example, you know the methodology, you use the software, you simulate. This is how the motion of the solid and the company in vertex field looks like. So the solid is oscillating in the, in the vertical direction. It does shed some vertices. Okay, so this is a typical FSI problem against a typical CFD problem. Now, when we solve the FSI problems, we have an additional complexity in the form of mesh motion. That is, when the solid moves, the surrounding fluid domain, that is the fluid mesh also has to move to accommodate the motion of the solid. This adds to one difficulty, that is we here in this case, the solid, the fluid domain is behaving like a solid. It is deforming. So this is one of the difficulties that we experience when we come to, when it, we move from CFD to fluid structure interaction problems. In, in modeling fluid flow, that is in typical CFD approach, we model fluid using Eulerian approach and we model solids using Lagrangian approach. That is we, for a fluid, we have a fixed domain and the fluid particles move from one location to another location within the fixed rate. Whereas for the solid mechanics, the, we track the particles of the solid. So we follow the particles of the solid as they move, as they deform. Since in FSA problem, the solid is moving and when the solid moves, it is moving the fluid along with it. So the fluid mesh is behaving like a solid. To model the FSA problem, we need what is called as arbitrary Lagrangian Eulerian approach. We have both, that is Eulerian approach for the fluid, Lagrangian approach for the solid, as well as the motion of the solid mesh. Because of the mesh is moving, we have mesh velocity, which needs to be added to the convective term, convective term in the Navier-Stokes equation. 
and how accurately we can resolve this con this mesh velocity also uh, affects the results of FSI simulation. So this method has been well established. You might have seen this simulation already. This is FSI simulation done with ALS2 software. So this is with turbulent flow. Using mesh motion, we can simulate problem FSI problems quite accurately. But the main challenge is in getting those algorithms for mesh motion, efficient algorithms for mesh motion. Even though we can simulate some FSA problems using mesh motion technique, these, pro these methodologies are not suitable for problems where the solid experiences a significant deformation. So for this type of problem, the mesh morphine algorithms are not appropriate. We have to resort to either adaptive refinement algorithms or unfitted or immersive boundary methods. Okay. Now we looked at different class uh, types of streams that are available to us based on different factors, different aspects of fluid structure interaction problems. The first among them is types of streams based on the meshes we use. As we have seen, when we use body fitted meshes that are readily available to us in a CFD software for, for CFD problems, we do we need mesh motion algorithms to account for the motion of the fluid when the solid moves the fluid. fluid. So we have early formulation we need either mesh morphine or remission algorithm. We, for simple deformations, for simple displacement or small displacements, mesh morph morphine is sufficient enough. But when the displacements or deformations are significantly large, we do need remission. For example, as shown in the figure at the bottom. So as these particles move downwards because of the gravity, so they experience significant displacement. And since we are using body fitted meshes, the mesh needs to be redeveloped or the mesh needs to be readjusted adaptively at every time step or at least whenever there is significant change in the topology. The second type of methods are based on fixed background grids. For these type of, for these type of methods, we have several varieties of techniques. One of the most commonly used approach is the immersive boundary method. And there are other variations, for example, fictitious domain method, Fretzel method, or overset meshes. So for these types of meshes based on fixed background risks, we don't need any mesh motion algorithm because the fluid mesh remains fixed. Of course, then that means that we do require other algorithms, for example, to find where the solid in which cell of the fluid the solid point is located in. So these kind of algorithms and also how to divide the cut cells and integrate or map the solution accurately in a cut cell. So these require new algorithms. So in a typical simulation done with the fixed background risk, so this is how the solid moves. The background fluid mesh remains fixed. It doesn't change. That, is, that was the classification based on the types of meshes we use. And then we have types of schemes based on how we solve the governing equation. That is equations for the fluid, fluid problem, solid problem, and the interface. We have three sets of equations. Depending upon how we solve, we call the schemes as monolithic scheme or fully coupled scheme or partition schemes. There are a variety of schemes when it comes to partition schemes. In the monolithic approach, we solve all of the equations together. That means when we formulate the matrix, so all equations are grouped into a single matrix. So the blue portion is for the fluid and the red one is for the solid and the black ones represent 
the coupling between the fluid and solid. Whereas in the partition approaches, we solve the different problems separately, that is fluid on its own, like a CFD problem, and solid on its own, like the solid, any typical solid mechanics problem. And then we loop over these the individual solvers. When we loop, we pass the data from one, sol one solver to the other solver. Okay, pl please don't do anything. So, thank you. Okay. What are the advantages of these mono different types of solvers or different types of streams? In the monolithic stream, so we can achieve higher order accuracies. That means we can use large time step to complete a simulation successfully. So savings in computational time. And we can also do simulations of solids with very low or even zero mass. So there are no instabilities when it comes to monolithic stream. However, the advantage are we have to compute the coupling terms in the matrix, that is these black, these black portions, these coupling terms. So they, this can be accomplished only in in-house codes because it, this computation of these coupling matrices requires the data from both the fluid solver and the solid solver. So, we cannot use this type of scheme when we want to couple third party libraries for CFD solvers and solid mechanics solvers. And they also require custom like parallel preconditioners because of the differences in units. Fluid problem may have one type of units and solid problem have different units and the order of the magnitude is different from one domain to another, another domain. So this will require custom preconditioners. So these are the disadvantages. In from when sorry yeah when it comes to partition approaches for fluid structure interaction the advantages are we don't need to compute the coupling term so we can couple different CFD and solid mechanics solvers arbitrarily so these are non-intrusive in nature since we don't need the coupling terms so they, they, they are low flexible coupling of different third-party libraries. However, there is a serious disadvantage that is what we call in the community as added mass instability. This is similar to CFL condition that you might be familiar when we solve CFD problems. So this is an instability which limits the types of problems that you can solve. So this instability is typically a function of the densities of the solid and the, and the fluid and the thickness of the solid and the ends modulus of the solid. The thinner and the more flexible the structure is, the higher the added mass. The higher, the lower the density of the structure, that is, if the density ratio the, of the solid and fluid is closer to one, then such problems are difficult to simulate. For example, it is easier to simulate aeroelastic flutter, that is, fl flow past winds, air, flow past winds than compared to the problems where we have water, for example, flow through arteries, flow through hot walls or hydrodynamics. Okay. So these are classifications of the methods or schemes we have available for solving FSA problems. So once we fix on the mesh type we use and the types of coupling we want, types of the scheme that is monolithic or partition scheme we want to use. So these are again based on some other aspects that is what type of coupling we want to model how or how we want to model the coupling between the fluid and solid. The most widely used the coupling we have is Dirichlet-Neumann coupling. So again we retry we recall the two equations of the fluid solid interface one is the kinematic constraint which works as a Dirichlet boundary condition for CFD solver. That is, we impose the velocity of the solid on the fluid. This is a Dirichlet boundary condition for the CFD solver. The second condition works as a Neumann boundary condition. That is, what is the force acted on the solid by the fluid? So this is a Neumann boundary condition for solid mechanics solver. So if you use this approach, then we have the classical Dirichlet-Neumann coupling. 
this is a non intrusive propylene because the boundary transitions are, are natural or very straightforward to implement using the third party libraries this allows coupling of different sol solvers in a flexible manner however this type of coupling has disadvantages in terms of st stability that is added mass stability that we have discussed in the in the last slide the other types of coupling are using dirichlet robin coupling or robin nyman coupling robin robin coupling that is the robin boundary transition is a combination of the dirichlet nyman nyman basis that is we have a linear, linear combination of these two equations so these types of coupling have been proven to improve the stability of schemes however we need to be careful about this new type of coupling because they do have some disadvantages in terms that although they improve the stability this improved stability is at the expense of dynamic properties dynamic characteristics of the structure so we are changing the frequencies of the structure so which is then it means that we are not modeling the structure accurately and the third type of coupling is force based coupling this is the coupling that is used in immersive boundary method this coupling is also intrusive that is we need access to the solver to modify the code in the immersive boundary method we use direct forcing so this direct forcing is a is type is a type of body force body force which is calculated depending upon the problem whether it is a rigid solid or flexible solid the advantage of the immersive boundary method is it is it doesn't possess any added mass in, instabilities so we can simulate problems with zero mass and there is no restriction on the deformation of the solid however because of the use of artificial artificial stream strains and because of the way the force is calculated that is the body force this makes it a kind of loose coupling and because of this explicit or loose nature of coupling we require significantly smaller time step for the simulation so that means these immersive boundary methods prove to be quite expensive compared to other methods so overall so the difficulty levels in of fsa problems increase depending upon the type of structure depending upon the type of fluid and even within the fluid whether we have a laminar flow or turbulent flow or multiphase flow but depending upon the structure for rigid structures small deformation these are the most easier like the easier problem to solve and the complexity increases if the displacement of the rigid structure is quite significant so we need some advanced mesh morphine or mesh remeshing algorithm and with flexible structures the complexity increases as the structure becomes lightweight and also thinner and for a given structure it is easier to simulate a problem where the fluid is air as opposed to when the fluid is water or blood that is the density ratios of the solid and fluid the higher the density ratio the easier it is to solve the lower the density ratio the more difficult it is because of the added mass and for laminar problems it is easier to solve fsa problems because of the fact that we don't need we don't need that much mesh refinement to capture the boundary layers for turbulent flow problems to capture the boundary layers we need a very like graded meshes around the structures which are difficult to retain when we when we adopt the mesh using mesh morphing algorithms okay these are the software that are available to us for solving fsa problems in most of the software the coupling is the main issue some software have both fluid and solid solvers for example ansys and adina they do provide both the solvers so they have their in house coupling when it comes to open form open form has fsa problem capability for rigid sol rigid solids for flexible solids we do have coupling through precise precise offers coupling with uh, different F fea solvers 
for example, calculates or code aster. However, as I mentioned, since we are coupling in a partition manner, so each of these solver, each of the solvers, each of the software have their own limitations. Okay. What are the skills? What are the knowledge? What is the knowledge you need if you want to become an expert or if you want to enter the field of fluid search interaction? So to be able to solve FSI problems uh, or to be able to yeah, develop your own codes or understand the behavior, how understand how the expected behavior should be, to understand the results, to make sense of the results, you do need, first of all, in the fundamental knowledge of fluid mechanics and a knowledge of CFD, how to set up the models for flow fast fixed and solids. What are the meshes you need? How to generate the meshes, grade and meshes, boundary layers, how to run the simulations. Okay, this is the most basic thing you need. I see that is you need to be good at CFD. You don't need to be an, uh, an expert uh, knowing everything, but you need to be able to set up the meshes and run simulations and understand and post process the reason. Then you need to know the fundamentals of dy dynamics and vibrations. That is um, vibrations of one, one degree of freedom system, multi degree of freedom system for rigid solids. And you do need some knowledge of nonlinear vibrations. And when it comes to flexible solids, you need to know solid mechanics, stress analysis, and also how to solve these solid mechanics problems using software. Then the software is based on finite element method. And last but not least, you need to be good at programming. It, the more you know, the more languages you know, the better it is for you to ex so that you can explore more opportunities. Okay, I have compiled a list of useful resources for you for different topics. These are the textbooks that you can follow for learning basic fluid structure interaction based on rigid bodies and experimental methods, results from experiment, and so on. The classic literature on fluid structure interaction. And these are the resources for vibrations. You can follow any other textbook that you are familiar that you are familiar with for dynamics and vibrations. And these are the some of the books on fluid search interaction, that is computational fluid search interaction that discuss the computational aspects of fluid structure interaction. So I I'm also preparing a GitHub repository where I'm documenting where I'm uh, sort in this list of all the resources so you can follow the github page and i am i also have a github repository with the uh, python notebooks if anybody is interested in exploring fsi coupling streams in detail before we conclude to give you some idea about the current hot topics in fluid search interaction one of them is morphine winds that is flexible winds adjusting to the fluid or the flexible winds that we can control to reduce the drag or whatever the property, depending upon how we want. The second one is energy harvesting from what has to do with vibrations or even the flow itself, for example, harvesting wave energy. This is one of the current hot topics in the, in, in the area of fluid structure interaction. This, is, this has a separate name for it. It is called wave structure interaction. Yes. As specific name, and then soft robotics. So people may not realize, but soft robotics are based on pneumatic activation or fluidic activation or applications of fluid search interaction. And this video here, this is soft robot for underwater exploration. And Improving health, improving the healthcare is one of the top priorities now. So modeling the cardio cardiovascular system and other system that involve fluid stretch interaction is one of the hot topics in fluid stretch interaction now. So how to accurately model the FSI problem in arteries and heart walls and how to and understanding how the aneurysms affect the blood flow is quite crucial in, in diagnosing and in treatment as well. 
Last but not least, reduced order models for nonlinear problems. Reduced order models are always quite difficult to develop, but they do help in reducing the simulation time. Okay, because they give us faster solution. And as we are moving towards the age of digital twins, the reduced order models are quite helpful. They have a huge potential, but it is quite difficult to develop. These are all the resources or references. Thank you all for your patience. Thank you all for your time. And we now have the floor for question and answers. We do appreciate all of those who have already sent us the questions. I will go through those questions one by one. And if you have any other questions, please do post them in the chat box. Okay, We'll try to answer the questions as much as possible. Thank you, Jana, for a wonderful session. It was, it was really very, very informative. So, so yeah, I mean, uh, those who are having questions, please, you know, start posting it in chat. I will try to coordinate it. And also, maybe uh, we also already have some questions. Maybe we can start with that. Uh, yeah. So, some of, some of you have already sent us questions. So, we'll go through those questions. Uh, we try to avoid the questions that are quite generate, like, uh, how, how to solve a particular problem are quite generate like um, not related to FSI. So we try to avoid those. We'll keep them up to the end. If you have some time left, we'll try to answer those. Okay, so some questions related to CFD, FSI. So, okay, how beginner can start the FSI? What is the right way for beginner to dive into FSI? What is the beginner level course or boot to start with? So and so on. Okay, how to learn, how to become expert. So, how to become expert? Okay, there is no, there is no shortcut. You have to spend your time. You have to learn the basics. You have to get your hands dirty. When it comes to CFD, write your own code. You don't. Have, it doesn't have to be perfect. You don't need to solve millions of degrees of freedom problem. You don't need HPC. Basic problems, simple problems for which we have a adjustive literature, look at the test books, develop your own code, try to understand. That's the best way to become an expert. Once you have an understanding, once you have your own solver, use the solver or either use the other solvers, established solvers like OpenFOAM, any other open source solver, commercial software. Okay. So that's that. You have to practice a lot. There is no shortcut. You have to become an expert. You have to practice a lot. You have to spend time. So that the, there is no smart work in. Okay, so you have to practice hard. You have to work hard. The coming to beginner level courses, I have highlighted some test books for you to follow. Yeah. So this is flow induced vibration by Blevin. This is one of the classical test books, and also there are papers. Some papers by uh, Sarpataya. Uh, there are some well established researchers in the FSI field. So please do follow this GitHub page. So we will keep updating this. So this will be a good point to start looking at for resources to learn FSI. And as Sandeep already mentioned, we have recently introduced a course on fluid stretch interaction. This is a very basic course introducing you to FSI field and solving some digit body FSA problems using open form as well as Python. There are no such courses available. So this will be, this is the first of its kind. And you do have some tutorials on YouTube uh, on creating or setting up models, set solving FSA problems using ANSYS. And I'm sure there are some tutorials available using open form okay so you have to explore you have to do some research into the resources but please you can you feel free to approach us if you need any help with these resources that is where to find them what are the resources okay. what are the basics physics knowledge to domain which kind of fea cfd fea tools are used currently um, okay, so which is the market for this type of sector? Yeah, thank you. That's a very good question. 
So to uh, the domain knowledge you need is fluid mechanics, solid mechanics, and dynamics and vibrations. Okay. You don't need to be an expert in all the three, but you need to develop a fundamental understanding of each field, like how to solve single degree of freedom, multi degree of freedom systems for rigid bodies, how to solve some simple linear equations using perturbation methods or using even numerical methods, how to solve some stress analysis problem, just some simple problem. What are the basic parameters you need, like ends modulus, density, how to mesh, how to set up an FEA model using ANSYS or any other software. And which is the market for this type of sector? My, as I have shown you, the fluid search interaction is quite a bit worse. There are quite, quite a variety of applications. So you can work in like um, renewable energy industry, wind turbines, tidal turbines, Okay, hydraulic turbines as well. And also in biometrical industry, in modeling FSI in like hot flow, like flow through hot walls, flow through arteries, and also soft robotics. So uh, there are uh, quite a variety of sectors that you can explore. So our, our, our engineers who are related to water or research with the fluid, such, I'm assuming it is structure interaction in the in the dash are always in demand. This, um, I must say this is quite a niche field. So this expertise is built on top of either CFD or FEM background or solid mechanics background. But once you develop this expertise, your employment or research opportunities do improve because the demand is there and the research the supply is less because it requires expertise in multiple fields and people with those kind of expertise are quite rare. Yeah, I mean, just uh, China, just to add one more point to that uh, market, like uh, which are all the area, like, I mean, even in the conventional, uh, you know, uh, industry like aerospace, uh, automobile and everywhere, you know, you, you still, and I'm just uh, addressing those who asked that question, like you still have FSI demand because of like as uh, China showed up, like wall designs or, you know, these uh, flutters yeah, yeah. And, and all, I mean, it is, it is there in most of the, uh, you know, in the conventional industry as well. Plus additional to that, you know, whatever he told like, uh, you know, biomedical field and this you know, wind, wind turbines and things like that, it's also very useful. Exactly. Okay. And, uh, Another advantage is once you develop this expertise, you can move to from one wheel to different field because when we are using the software, um, the, the software doesn't care whether it is a flow past artery or flow over airfoil. So you can, you can extend this knowledge to different fields. You can even develop uh, some custom solutions. Okay, coming to other questions. So I have grouped the questions depending upon like how, mm, like depending upon whether they are related to software or learning, etc. So these questions are related to the coupling techniques for FSI. The difference in weakly coupled and fully coupled. So here we have the differences in fully coupled and weakly coupled. Fully coupled is, I mean, uh, the problem is uh, there are terms that are used loosely. So, which makes it difficult to understand what people mean uh, if, if, okay. So, for me, there, there is monolithic scheme and other schemes. So, monolithic scheme means I solve all the equations together in a single matrix. And if I split them, then that is partition. In partition, there are different approaches. So, some people call it explicit coupling, some people call it loosely coupled, some call it partitioned. The, although there is some distinction in when, when it comes to explicit coupling, explicit coupling is kind of, is also known as staggered scheme where there are no iterations. So we don't iterate at the time step. We solve the fluid problem and the solid problem only once. Okay. And that, so each method has advantages and disadvantages. I hope these points, points are good enough for your answer.
We will share these slides. You can roll through them in detail. Uh, Sandeep, um, I think we can roll through some of the questions posted in the chat box for now. Yes, that is a good idea. So let me pull in some of the questions. Why, why is the commercial software or open source not able to couple the solid deformation and fluid force all at once, the two-way coupling like Adena solver does? Thank you. Yeah, that's a very good point. The Adena solver was developed by Professor Bathe and his group at MIT, and later it was like developed into this Adena software. So they have both the solvers available in at their own, like at their own company. So it was easy for them to trouble. Okay. And for that, you do require some sophisticated algorithms, like I mentioned, uh, parallel preconditioners. Uh, that that's uh, that that's when you can that is when you have access to both you can do it. But that doesn't mean that everyone who has access to both are doing it. For example, ANSYS has access to both like Fluent and FEM solvers, but they still have a weak coupling. Uh, there are there are a variety of reasons. For example, this strongly weakly coupled codes they do scale well on HPC and high performance computing, so it can solve very big problems. But strongly coupled or monolithic schemes, they don't scale that well. So you lose parallel scalability. So there are lots of things that go behind in deciding which one we, they want to adopt and which type of industries they solve. Also, like Fluent, ANSYS bought Fluent recently. So maybe that was one option why ANSYS Went, went with a weak coupling approach. All right, let's go to the next question. For wind effect on high rise building, FSI is essential or not? And we have to consider one sided coupling or both sided coupling? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, it depends upon how tall or uh, what are the properties of the building. So, ideally, the buildings are like the building structures are built quite rigid, quite stiff. So if the structure is not tall enough, then we don't need two-way coupling. So there are only very special cases, like if you look, look at Burj Khalifa, are very, very, very tall structures that do behave like a, like a cantilever, less flexible cantilever. In those cases, we do need to look at two-way coupling, but normally for general buildings, which are like short or moderately tall, we don't, we don't need two-way coupling, yeah. So next question. So uh, also nobody is perfectly rigid in the entire world, but majority of the companies do not do it. Uh, it is due to the computational resource challenge or something else. Okay, yeah, that's a good question. Um, yeah, nobody is perfect. Yes, that's true. But if you look at uh, some of the structures, for example, um, chimneys. Okay, so chimney structures, we can like, they do oscillate, but if you look at this, um, the cross section itself, it doesn't deform. Okay? It doesn't become an ellipse shape. So, and we can model it as a rigid circuit. And also, if you look at uh, cables, like mooring cables, so they are quite stiff. They do bend, but in some of the cases, like they, they don't deform radially. So we can model those structures as rigid structures. So the reason we do it is it, it be, the problem becomes easier. All right. So another question is uh, an interesting one. Uh, what what are the hot areas or challenges in automotive engineering or automotive industry that can be addressed by FSI? Hmm. Hot area. Okay. So it, it was hot area, but uh, since we are moving towards uh, electric vehicles, so we are losing these 
problems uh, when it comes to IC engines, like we do need lots of walls and all, all those in moving parts. So that was one of the projects I was working on for a German company. So it was in automobile like, where we were modeling the opening and closing of jet walls in that are used in like IC engines. So, but um, as opposed to uh, aerospace industry, there are not that many problems in automobile industry when it comes to FSI. Okay, question was about airbag simulation. Is it uh, uh, also FSI related? Yeah, that good point. Yes, thank you. Yeah, it is FSI simulation. Yes. Okay, great. Uh, there is a long question. Uh, I am trying to simulate two-way FSI of a rotating seal simulation similar to hydrodynamic bearing. I am using transient CFX simulation and transient structural using system coupling in ANSYS. I am unable to initialize using the steady state results in transient CFX simulation that we usually do in CFX simulations. So this is a problem. Which so, right. Is okay. so that's uh... It's a very specific question. Thank you. Um, yeah. So the initialization through system coupling is a bit more complicated. You have to do it in multiple steps. First, you have to solve the problem as a steady state problem in the system coupling itself. Because the system coupling doesn't let you initialize using the steady state solution from CFX or Fluent. So within the system coupling itself, you have to solve the problem as steady state problem. That is by assuming that the structure is rigid, you can make it stiff or rigid or fix it. Okay. And then once you solve the steady state problem, you have to restart from that point. So you have to use the restart option in system coupling. First as a steady state problem, and then restart from that step using transient options. Okay, that should be useful, I guess. Another specific question somebody is facing, uh, mm -hmm. like it's it's from Ayushman. Uh, so high speed gas particle flows taking through, uh, taking place through a micro shock tube incorporated with nozzle. So that is his, uh, you know, the problem, I guess. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then in that these particles are hitting the vertical surface and penetrate the sur surface. I want to find the depth of penetration caused by these high speed particles. Which software or approach shall I use? Um, I see. I do not know about this. Any, in my knowledge, I do not know about any software that is capable of doing this, because you do need high speed flow, like um, high speed flow CFD, and then you need uh, particle um, erosion. Maybe you can look at lamps. I, I'm not sure. You can look at lamps. Maybe maybe Star CCM plus. So you can look at these two software. Okay, so how to solve FSI at 0 0.8 mark? So, you know, so again, high speed uh, for a wing in ANSYS because due to presence of shock, it is not solving in system coupling in workbench. Um, it should be possible. Um, when it comes to error elasticity, the ANSYS is quite capable. But, because there is there is almost a negligible added mass, so it should work fine. If it is not working, then there must be something wrong in the settings of either of either one of your solvers or the way you define the interfaces. So you, where the ANSYS transfers the data that is from fluid to solid and solid to fluid. So you have to look at all this. My solution is first try to simulate a CFD problem. First see if all the settings are fine. Then look at the coupling. Okay. The next question: What are the common mistakes or misconceptions while performing FSI simulation based on partitioned approach? Yeah, thank you. Again, it's a, it's a good question. The common misconception is that so normally people think okay, you can use ANSYS or Open Form or any other software and like simulate any any problem. Mm, as we have seen except for Adena, which uses like monolithic approach or fully coupled approach. Other, all the others use partition approaches and partition approaches do suffer from added mass instabilities. So, and uh, another thing that makes it um, 
like that adds to the mistranscription is all the tutorials are from error elasticity. So are like we have a steel plate and A. So these problems are easy to solve because there is no added mass. But when it comes to hydrodynamics, wave structure interaction, or for soft robotics with very flexible structures, most of the these partition schemes they do struggle, or some of them even fail. You can try to experiment this. If, for example, you simulate a, like you take a beam, a cantilever beam in a in a channel, cantilever beam. There is a flow. Okay, so the beam deforms. You don't need to any, any turbulence. This laminar flow and start playing with the parameters. Reduce, use a, is a bulky solid, reduce the thickness, see how the coupling performs. Reduce the density of the solid. First use 10 times the fluid, reduce it to five times on the same density and see how this performs. All right, so another question is about uh, sloshing FSI. So, uh, you know, do you suggest any um, software or something which can solve these kind of problems? Slashing, yeah, you have multi-phase flows. So, as long as you don't have a like any significant deformations or something crazy happening with the solids, you can you, you should be able to solve this using using ANSYS or any any other software that is capable of FSI. For example, you have a like from MSC, you have this cradle and cross simulation. So they, they should be able to solve this problem. Okay, I have a question which is slightly out of the box. Does open foam support supersonic LDS simulations? I don't know. Uh, so I think, uh, Chenna, you are not audible. Uh, Sorry, I, I don't know. Uh, we cannot hear you now. Uh, Are you mute? Can hello? you unmute? No? Yeah, hello? now yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, sorry, I, I don't know about whether your open form has the probability or not. Yes. So uh, somebody told SU2 to be better. So next, what? Um, okay. For wind effect on high rising building in ANSYS, we have to consider transient structural with LES. Uh, or static structural with LES or both? Transient structural. So when you do FSI problems, always do, always use transient structural. Because when you use static structural, you are missing out the dynamic component. Yes. Can we uh, able to, can we be able to solve FSI problem in aeroacoustic and structure interaction? Yes, yes. Yes, right. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, so, yeah, I think, you know, in the beginning, whenever you're speaking, in the starting, I think that time, yes, there is some problem with your sound. We are not able to hear you always in the, when you start, maybe because of sound arrest, I mean, you're arresting the noise or something. As, uh, hello, can you hear me now? Okay. So, can we be able to solve, uh, okay, is pulse jet engine related to FSI? Another. Pulse jet engine. I I don't know. Yes. So, if you want to study the strain rate dependency of neo hooken material using some kind of viscoelastic model, how can we do this using FSI? Oh, uh, this is not related to FSI. This is a complete solid mechanics problem. So, mm -hmm. where we have to account for the viscoelasticity using some internal variables. So this is a pure solid mechanics problem where we have like path dependent variable in that comes in effect into the elasticity matrix and stresses. Okay. Another question is currently in automotive industry, commercially available software for FSI use particle method, CPM and FPM, especially for airbag simulations, but they don't predict well. Pressure measurement, uh, not correct, and temperature effects not considered. Is there a is there any better approach? Um, yeah, the better approach would be to model the airbag as a, like uh, using shell structures and then model the fluid 
pro properly. That, that's the better approach. Like, for example, how we model parachute. Okay. Use, use model model fluid using C, like the standard CFD method, for example, FEM or LPM, whatever it is, the, the proper approach, the standard approach, and then model air barrier as, as a shell using shell elements. Okay, great. So immersed body, uh, immersed boundary method is not available in commercial software. Why? What are the drawbacks of IBM method? Yeah, uh, the drawbacks of IBM method, so as I mentioned in the slide, so one of them is like it's it's predominantly first order accurate. Okay. And it is, uh, it limit it has limited applicability in the sense of uh, the types of problems you can solve. For example, it is mostly accurate for laminar flow, flow problems. Of course, I'm talking about the standard immersive boundary method. There are some uh, developments in the immersive boundary methods. So the problem is they are not called immersive boundary methods anymore. So if you are using adaptive refinement and there are some techniques that you can use with adaptive refinement and like a, a derivative of immersive boundary method. But these immersive boundary methods are not available in the commercial software because of the, these disadvantages. And they need very, very small time steps. And also, um, depending upon where you are coming from, like the softwares have history of development and all of a sudden they can't simply change their entire code structure unless there is some other company which has developed this capability and some big company like ANSYS buys them and makes it part of their solver capabilities. So another question is how to solve the collapse of cavity bubble near a rigid plate using FSI? Right. Oh, it's a very good problem. So, so if you are looking at cavities, you need to consider multi-phase flows. So in your fluid, fluid, uh, in your fluid solver, you have to set up the model as a multi-phase solver. And then the structure, it can be rigid or flexible. It is a FSI problem where the flow is multi-phase. Okay, so actually the challenge is more on capturing the uh, bubble collapse and you know, the- Yes, yes, the, uh, the challenge the is more on fluid side. Yes, yes, exactly. So you need to have the extremely high pressure and you know, it's, it's something which I have worked on, on ca cavitation bubble collapse. So it's, it's yeah. quite challenging so, in, in, in that. Yeah, so in that case, this, you, you can even start this as a CFD problem. You don't even need FSI. First, to try to simulate, since you are talking about rigid plate, so try to simulate it as a, a multi-phase flow, the like cavity bubble collapsing on a fixed surface, fixed solid. Try to solve this because, as uh, Sandeep mentioned, so the challenges are in fl on fluid side because when the bubble collapses, we have pressure gradients that are crazy. So the fluid solver should be able to capture this. If if not, then there is no point going to FSI. Yes, I mean first of all, extremely high pressure, and then you know your your time step size is going to be something like one minus nine, one minus yes. ten to capture the sound wave. And yeah. these are all the challenges yeah. they have to face. Okay, so I have performed the two-way FSI on aerofoil using the air as a fluid. I was able to run the simulation, but when I'm changing the fluid to water, keeping the Reynolds number same, I was unable to run the case. So what may be the problem and how can I resolve it? I see. Okay, again, okay. So this again points to the added mass instability. So when you change the fluid from air to water, the solid has to move now. Now the solid has to move a fluid that is quite heavy. So there is significant added mass. So this is in terms of physics. So coming to the partition streams, so this translates into an instability. So how to resolve this? It's a it's a very big question. So I don't know. You can maybe use some relaxation parameters. You for I don't know which software you are using. So there are some relaxation parameters in the coupling strip. So use a small relaxation parameter. For example, in ANSYS. You can play with uh, force relaxation, maybe 0 0.1 or even smaller, but 
do not relax the displacements. It can also um, add some damping. If, if it doesn't affect, it add some damping, damping to the structure. It does help. Okay, so another interesting question is, I am working on FSI of a flexible tensile membrane suspended in a turbulent boundary layer. In ANSYS, I am using two-way system coupling between fluent and transient structural modules. However, in the data transfer section, I can only transfer data from the membrane to the surrounding fluid uh, from either the top or the bottom surface. How to transfer the data from the membrane on both sides of the surrounding fluids? Right. Okay. That's a very good question and a very challenging problem. When you are modeling the structure as a shell element, like there is no thickness that you explicitly model. So you are modeling only the surface. So the problem is, since there is only one surface, you have to split it into two. You have to split it into two and you have to do this before you go to mesh setup. You have to do this in the geometry model itself. When you import the model into the ANSYS Fluent, the Fluent should see two faces on the either side of the plate. Then in, this is called shadow. Okay, So in ANSYS terminology, this is called shadow, wall shadow. We have one surface and then the shadow. So that, that because of that, the fluid domain, uh, the fluid mesh at the interface has uh, as a kind of duplicate nodes, okay, or duplicate points, because you need pressure jump from one side to the other side. So you need two different meshes at the same location. We have to resolve this in our the geometry model itself. Okay, great. So another one is very generic one, like how about this session briefing and about the discount coupon I mentioned in the beginning. So, uh, you know, to everyone, I will, we will be sending you the link uh, for, of this uh, recorded session. Most probably we will upload it on YouTube and we will share you the link. And also uh, we will send you, uh, you know, the discount coupon, everything through email. So whoever registered, we will send it to all of you. All so and then is there any need of adaptive meshing while solving a two-way FSI system coupling simulation? Yes, um, there is. Um, it depends on need in the sense of like if you want to solve a very flexible structure or a rigid structure undergoing significant displacement, a flexible structure undergoing experiencing significant deformation. Yes, adaptive refinement would help. Adaptive refinement would help, yes, in those cases. I think we have addressed most of the questions. Like one more, I think. Why the uh, why the Turek from FSI benchmark problem cannot be solved in Abacus? I think mm, I I I don't know. I don't. Mm. I don't know about Abacus coupling. I, I I don't even know if they do support coupling. I know they have, of course, they have solid mechanics solver and they have recently added CFD stability, recently relative to the solid mechanics stability. I don't know if they have the coupling capability. If 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 there is a capability and if you cannot solve this turret on benchmark, then that again points to like two two main issues. One is the added mass that is instability because of the partition approach. And the second one is the mesh motion algorithm is not good enough. Assuming that all the setups for fluid problem and the solid problem or interfaces are correct. So please ensure that we have set up the model correctly. If you have set up everything correctly, then you are mesh, the, the mesh motion algorithm, either the settings are not sufficient enough. If the settings are sufficient enough, then the coupling solver is not capable of dealing with the added mass that is experienced in this problem. Okay, thank you. 
So I mean, another one is about again discount coupon and all. So is it relevant for other courses as well? Like yeah, we'll we'll give you discount coupon for a bundle for FSI, like which involves FSI course, uh, FEM, Python, and everything together, like an open form together for you, which is like extremely cheap you know which you, you will not get first of all fsi courses are not available anywhere and then you know you don't get all these together uh, as a bundle at this cost so and plus we are giving you a, a lot of discount 50 percent around 50 percent will give you as a bundle and for each courses we will give you some additional discount maybe 30 percent or something and we will send you after maybe after an hour we'll send you an email to all with all these coupon codes and all I mean, just to help you all all right, I think most of these questions are uh, addressed in the chat. So we got another 10 more minutes. Uh, uh, Chana, if you have a few questions yeah, on yeah. the slides, we can address that. Yeah, okay. Yes, Prakash, we are recording it. We will upload it on YouTube also, and then we'll share you the link. We'll we'll send it through uh, email. You will you'll get the recording. Okay. So I think we have addressed most of the questions that I have here. Maybe like if if, if we haven't addressed any, if we are missing some, so please uh, please do post them in the chat box. Yes. Okay. Okay, so I think most of them are addressed. And if you have any specific questions, please post it on the chat. Otherwise, you know, we can uh, conclude the session. If, and and if for, we have missed all, some, thank you very much for participating. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Yeah. If we have missed answering some of the questions and if you want us to answer now, so please do post it in the chat box. Yes. Or you can even talk now. You know, now we don't yeah, have many yeah. much crowd. You I mean you can unmute yourself and you can ask directly. Yeah. Hello. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Hi. Yeah. Hello, sir. How are you doing today, both of you? I'm very glad. You know, it was a, a very pretty good informative system from Doctor Shinakesh Karapa, sir, and uh, from the other sir, Flow Thermal Lab. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I have already posted these questions. So do I need to repeat it here in the form, or you know, uh, which one yeah. would be convenient uh, to use? No, no, no. Please, no, please. I, I, yeah. I'm sure that we missed some of them, so I don't know if you missed reverse. So please do yeah. ask. Yeah. Yes, no, no. Uh, yeah. The I would like to ask uh, the scope of FSI in terms of industrial jobs. So when I have spoken to the professor here, he told like uh, you know it's kind of narrowed down or something in terms of industry. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um. Like I said, yeah. Um, this is a uh, not narrow. This is a niche field. Right. So this uh, okay. not uh, because of the com computational complexity of the FSI problems. Mm -hmm. Not mm -hmm. everyone is willing to do FSI simulations. Okay. 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 But there are okay. some industries where FSI is crucial. For example, wind turbines, uh -huh. biomedical engineering. Uh -huh. So if you like, if you go to some clinicians, though they do need to make, make decisions about. Uh, when to operate, what is the size of the stand? So they do get these decisions nowadays from F from simulation. So on these simulations, they are based on uh, do do involve FSI simulation. So uh -huh. that's one issue. And if you go to a, a, a aircraft industry, so they they do need to run FSI simulation nowadays. Especially the we are moving towards flexible veins, morphine veins. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. So I have some more uh, specific questions related to me. Uh, I just wanted to ask you, like, uh, the uh, if we channelize the profile for pursuing a, a PhD research or towards a postdoc in terms of compressive flows, which I've asked you, and, you know, later secure a job in the aerospace industry, how does it, uh, you know, uh, looked out in terms of Europe or US or Canada, please, in the Western countries? Because it's something where majority of the research is linked towards the defense applications. Yes, yeah. Um... So compressible flows always, I mean, that yeah, you are absolutely right. It is mostly related to aircraft industry or rocket propulsion, which is quite niche again. Mm -hmm. And um, as opposed to wind energy or biomedical, again, they, there are quite a few, like quite a lot of restrictions of, mm -hmm. um, about like the visas, 
mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. they are exactly. mostly limited to the people who are in, within the country so yeah so it, it is a very good idea area to get like to get your phd i'm sure that that would be fantastic for learning mm-hmm. and but mm, if you want to go into industries there may not it may not be mm, that um, mm, I'm, I'm i'm trying to find the word it may not be that um, enticing for you but if you go if you want to become an academic that would be that would be worth pursuing uh, is it uh, uh, good to you know uh, try in europe or you know us or canada please um you can do it anywhere any good re- any good research lab any good pi mm-hmm. yeah it, it doesn't matter where you do it as long as you do the work and produce good work Okay. Okay. So, one, Sati, Sati, yeah, just yeah, to yeah. add add to that, you know, the, I mean, uh, you're, I mean, you're saying so, me as Plotter, well, so basically, I'm, I'm Dr. Sandeep Bhavanal here. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I know, I know, so, I know. Sorry, sorry, I forgot your name. Yeah, sorry. No, yeah. no, 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 no. Just to add a couple of points, you know, for your yeah. questions. Uh, yeah. One was about, you know, the niche field of FSI and the, yeah. uh, you know, the job opportunities in the industry. So, as uh, Dr. Karapar told, like. it is a, it is quite difficult to learn fsi that is the first thing and there are very less people who knows fsi see yeah. the, it is already understood that if you are good at fsi you are already good at cfd or yeah. fem okay. because you know normally how people are coming into fsi is either they are really good at cfd you know initial stage of their career or their research or their thesis is in cfd and then uh-huh. they add additional uh, you know fem skill to that and then uh-huh. they you know, move to fsi or the other okay. way around like you know your fem okay. guy and then you okay. learn cfd and then move to fsi this is normal okay. trend and, okay. and and then once you are in fsi then definitely you know even though it is a niche field maybe you may not be able to get a job in in, in the fsi may not be able to get but definitely you know you are opening up your profile much broader range like you know you can get a job in cfd you can get a job in fea or in uh-huh. fsi you know you are you you are multi talented now that is one thing second yeah, thing yeah. about your yeah second thing is about your uh, question on compressible flow and, and you know approaching us canada and europe and all so my personal you know my talking to several university students and you know people from who who asked several I mean similar question when sure. those who are struggling you know so what i feel is like once you really portray yourself as a compressible flow guy or a combustion guy what is sure. happening is you know most likely your visa is going to get rejected especially when you when it is us and all like because most of these are related to military applications and things like that so there are a lot of visa restrictions when it yeah, comes yeah. to combustion related topics and something related to you know this compressible flow and all maybe yeah, yeah. once you are already in that these countries then it will be easy but if you are trying to come from in go from india to these countries it will be quite difficult because it's very easy because you know how this visa uh, you know they, how they are done is like there are some keywords if they if you fit into these keywords uh, then they really scrutinize your uh, your you know background so yeah, yeah, yeah. those are all the challenges but otherwise it is a great field for sure okay yeah. okay I, i would like to add something like uh, equal polytechnic uh, does lot of fsi so i just wanted to know like uh, do you profess both of you look out uh, for the research from there in terms of fsi yeah france is quite good for fsi problem there are quite a few university and well established professor researchers working on fsi definitely mm-hmm. yeah Yeah. So I have some more yeah. specific questions, please. Uh, what are the pros and cons of doing a thesis in industry or under a professor if PhD is a long-term goal? Like how does you know how does it reflect on a profile of a master student? Um, uh, in at the end, I mean, it doesn't really matter where you do uh, like thesis, whether it is industry focused or academic focused. As mm-hmm. long as you do good work, because nowadays, well, even in academic projects or PhDs, we are like we are shifting towards. practical problems like focus on solving industry problems mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so okay. as long as yeah. however however it does depend upon what type of phd you want to do mm-hmm. okay. so depend like whether you want to focus on fundamental aspects developing uh, like solvers numerical methods mm-hmm. or whether you want to work on application oriented aspects mm-hmm. in your phd so mm-hmm. that that decide based on that you have to decide what type of thesis you want to do in your masters because this is like a stepping stone to your like career future. career yeah 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 
I am currently based in Sweden. I just want to know, can I do a cross continent thesis like uh, going to US or Canada? Like, have you seen students doing it? Uh, okay. Uh, sorry, I, I do appreciate your question. So let us give the chance to some others. If they okay. Have okay. Yeah, yeah, sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sandeep sir. Thank you so much, uh, Kadapa sir, for your, you know, valuable time. Yeah, you know, very, very welcome. Yeah, thank you. Sir. Yeah, yeah. Uh, some other question was related to as a Prakash question as a CFD beginner, where should I start? Uh, basically, I am a diploma holder currently doing BTEC automotive in, in part time. So, you know, Prakash, maybe I, I'll address this question, uh, uh, Jana. So, I mean, yeah. see, the thing is that basically you need to be quite good at your fluid mechanics, make sure that your basics are okay. And then you learn the fundamentals of CFD. Like, you know, you don't, don't go deep into software and learn the software, but instead of that, try to understand CFD basics, the fundamentals, like what are the numerical schemes, how to use these numerical schemes, what are boundary conditions. So actually we have a CFD foundation course on our platform. This is perfect for that. And then you will learn a little bit on, on the software as well, like Ansys Fluent, etc. That is the beginning. So once you are familiar with all those things, then you, do, you need to learn you know, software like OpenFOAM and Fluent and all in detail, and then go, go ahead with CFD. So that is one. I think we are almost close to the end time. And uh, one more sir, question we uh, can address. Sir, sir, I have a question. Can I ask? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Uh, so actually, I'm a currently third year BTEC uh, from Jadapur University Civil Engineering. And uh, my mainly work is focused in microfluidics domain, uh, okay. and which is mainly a field in um, mechanical actually. And mm -hmm. I have uh, one journal and two conferences also already. So, and I'm planning to pursue a integrated PhD or a direct PhD in USA uh, for the fall of 2024. Mm -hmm. So, uh, as coming from a civil background and uh, with the aim of working in the microfluidics domain, which is mainly a mechanical dominated field. So would that be an issue? Not at all. I mean, multiphysics is not uh, like is not owned by mechanical. So it when when we look at problems, like we don't look at a particular field. So yeah, as long as you know the fundamental, I mean, what is the difference between civil and mechanical? We we all learn fluid mechanics. We all learn solid mechanics. Yes. It's that which like, at the end it is application, right? <laughs> Exactly. See, the, the moment you move away from your BTEC, you know, when you go to master's, PhD, postdoc, and all, you will see that everything is same. You know, you will be doing programming, you will be doing electrical engineering, you will be doing software engineering, everything together. So there is no more, you know, differentiation later on. It's all, exactly. it's all yeah. same. So like, even if you are in civil engineering now, like once you, like when you go to master's or integrated PhD, you can, you can change the field. I mean, you can work on microfluidics or any other field related to related to the courses you have done, like solid mechanics, it doesn't mean that you work in civil engineering, right? You study solid mechanics, you can even go to biomedical engineering. Okay. For example. The, okay. the issue, I thought that uh, the uh, microfluidics courses and our CFD courses actually are not incorporated in our coursework in our university, in, by, in the civil department. So that I thought that that may be an issue by the other universities to take me up as their PhD candidate. Uh, no, no, no. Un unfortunately, some like, um, in some some parts of the world they don't but uh, if you look at uh, some um, some established research groups and some established you know, like big universities they do have cfd course for civil engineering because cfd is quite important for civil engineering like when you look at hydro hydraulics right okay yeah, yes, and sure. also you can take maybe you know in your final year and all if you are from yeah, jadavpur yeah. university or iits and all you know top universities in india you have an option for I think cross, uh, you know, department uh, courses and all as yeah, yeah, elective sure. courses. Yeah, try to do such courses; it will bridge the gap. Yeah, maybe like yeah, maybe they have some electives. Um, like I think some sometimes they they don't offer because there is there is no one to take them. Maybe if there is a demand, so do feedback to your like your lecturers and see what they can do. Thank you, sir. Hello, sir. Yeah, you're welcome. Hello. Yeah. Yes. I am PhD scholar last year from IIEST Sipur. Mm -hmm. uh, I am working on wind effect on tall structure, high rise structure. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so after after doing PhD, I want to um, join industry. So, mm -hmm. uh, so where I can apply or um, where are the aspects? I see. Mm. Uh, so, if you're, I, um, I mean, I'm not quite familiar with the industry in India at the moment because I lost my touch with the Indian industry. So, but since you did, 
CFD. So they are, uh, you can apply to any any job that uh, related to CFD. So you work with wind and tall structures. So that is CFD. So you can you can apply to any like any jobs related to automobile or aerospace or any, like any other jobs related to CFD. Okay, we can apply in aerospace, na? Aerofoil or something like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So. So I mean, it doesn't matter as long as you know your fundamentals are strong, and you know if if the company feel that you are you you are worth for them, you know they it doesn't matter which field you did your thesis. That that okay. is you know your your knowledge is most important. Okay. All right. Okay. I think we'll take the last question and then we'll close it. And the last question is: I, I'm a PhD student. I'm trying to simulate two FSI sloshing two way FSI sloshing in presence of a. Uh, flexible baffle, my simulation diverges when the baffle is inside the fluid domain. Could you suggest any solution regarding this? Mm -hmm. It's a, a difficult problem to solve, but uh, I, I, it's a difficult question to answer uh, without knowing some additional details, like what, how we, where is your baffle, like how thick is it, what are the properties, how are modeling. So one, like without knowing the details, what I can say is try to like try to verify your setup as a CFD problem. Fix the baffle, model the CFD problem first. And then convert it to a FSA problem. So if there are any issues with the CFD solver, then you can fix those issues and come to the FSA problem. I'm not saying this will fix your the problem you are facing, but at least it will help you filter out the issues you may have. Okay. If you want more details, you need to send me like the, for at least some details of the problem, like for example, a stretch, some parameters that you are using. Okay, so I think that's, you know, once you, if you could fix fluid mechanic side, maybe you can fix all the numerical aspects related to that and make sure. That is yeah, because if your CFL condition or exactly. is not like is not met, if the time step you have chosen is not met for the CFD problem, then the simulation may be trashing because of that, which you can face before even solving your FSA problem. So that's why my suggestion is don't try to solve the FSA problem directly. First to understand and solve the CFD problem and then solve the solid mechanics problem separately, you will understand quite a lot. Because in dynamics, we need to know what is the like fundamental frequency so that we can choose the time steps accurately. Okay, most of the time in dynamics, we use implicit scheme, so you don't have a CF, CFL condition there. But you, we do need to know what is the frequency of oscillation, so we need to choose the time step accordingly. And when you solve a CFD problem, then you will fix the mesh requirement, the solver, CFL condition, etc. Only once you understand both sides, then only you drop it. I think that's it. We can close it here. We have yeah. done all, Sir, all the last question. So. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Hello? Yeah, go ahead, please. Hello. Okay, yeah, okay. Ahead. Sir. Uh, in the in ANSYS, we have a dynamic meshing, so there is an option for remeshing. Re so how actually we select uh, the maximum skewness and minimum skewness? Because I am getting stuck there, and due to that, I think my uh, uh, setup is getting crashed. Right. Uh, so to do that, you first need to know what is the skewness you have in your. First, you need to verify that your mesh is of like uh, of good quality, and maximum screwness. Okay. Uh, so these are parameters. So um, my session is refer to the ANSYS manual. So they they have the uh, like range of parameters that you can use. And also, it it depends. Okay. On, okay. Mostly, it fails when you choose the cell size that is quite smaller or quite larger than what you have. So first to measure the cell sizes we have in your model and then use the okay. parameters for the dynamic mesh appropriately. Okay, 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 thank you.
Okay. Right. So okay. I think uh, it was. I think it was a very useful session for for you. Uh, we could answer you know, most of your questions. And in case if you still have some questions, you can write to us. Uh, we can you know we can uh, get back to you. We can maybe write to support at the right flowthermolab.com or info at flowthermolab.com and then we can address you know if uh, some of your questions yeah thank you uh, once again everyone thank you for taking oh. your time in the doing the wait and we do appreciate and we do appreciate all your questions yes. i hope you it, it, you found it useful okay yes thank you uh, thanks thanks channel for uh, for bye your bye. time yeah. yeah thank you then bye, -bye.